Hi everyone, this is Steven with The Collector Store, doing another box break, this time of M14, featuring Chandra the Planeswalker. One of the big returning themes inside this set is Slivers. Yes, Slivers have returned. Let's go ahead and crack this open. Um, as always, I will be doing a video recap of my box at the end of this video. So if you just want to see the big stuff pulled, you can fast forward to the end. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoy this. I hope this is actually a good box this time. <laughs> if you've watched my other videos, you know that I don't have the best luck in the world. But this time, it will be different. Make sure you subscribe to us and uh, check us out on Facebook. Let's begin here. Alright. So, we've got Divination, Plummet, Suntail Hawk. Uh, Zypha Charge, enchantment that gives your creatures flying, um, Ring Flesh, a lesser version of uh, Tragic Slip, um, Root Rala, Messenger Drake, Siege Master, Disperse, which will be very annoying and standard, Tome Scour, uh, something Tusker, can't even pronounce that guy. Uh, but he's a 2 drop 3 3 normal, so that's really good. Um, take that, Grizzly Bears. Uh, Bramble Crush. Enlarge. Target creature gains plus 7 plus 7 and trample. And as for the rare, Chandra's Phoenix. Chandra's Phoenix is a 2 mountain, 1 colorless. 2-2, two, two, Flying Haste. Whenever opponent is dealt damage by a red instant or sorcery spell you control, or a red planeswalker you control, return Chandra's Phoenix from your graveyard to your hand. And no foil in that one. So, I don't know how many of you went to the pre-release event, but uh, we had two of them up here. Got to play in one of them. Had to work the other. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, didn't do too well, but it looked like red, blue, control won the day, so uh, that kind of gives you a hint as to what might be coming in the next format. Alrighty, Mulhorn. Um, let's see here. Um, Root Rala. Show of Valor. Not bad. Helped me a few times in the pre-release. Uh, Mirror Folk Spy. Mark of the Vampire. Blur Sliver. And the one interesting thing about the slivers when they uh, reintroduced them was uh, they now say that it's only the slivers you control. So they didn't really release that many slivers, I think. So you're not going to see them in uh, standard. But um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they do for other formats like Commander. Uh, the rare I got is Cypher of the Sword. Three colorless, one planes, angel, three, three, flying, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to her. So it's like a, uh, a uh, fog bank, only bigger. Um, Marauding Mulhorn. Foil. Let's see, here. Let's see a smelt. Destroy target artifact. Ranger's Gilly. Cursed Spirit. Another root baller. Dawn Strike Paladin. Predatory Sliver, Seeker Strike, Goblin Shortcutter, Divine Favor, Maybe we have Blood, Duck Steel Ingot, always a fun card, Choice Worm, Enlarge, 
and the rare is Garuk's Horde. It's a uh, five colorless, two green, beast, seven, seven, with trample, play with the top card of your library revealed, and you may cast the top card of your library if it's a creature card. So you still have to pay for the, its cost, but it's kind of nice because you're playing with an extra card in your hand, theoretically. So, but it's a seven drop creature, so probably won't see that too much. Um, Caption Knight. Essence Scatter, Counterspell, Seismic Stump, Undead Minotaur, Archmaster, Archimancer, <clears throat> Giant Spider, Charging Griffin, Spore Mound, Never land it to the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 green sampling creature token into the battlefield. 3 3 fungus. Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, ground Horde Sliver, or Ground Shaker Sliver. Yeah, I actually play uh, a sapling stack, so that's why I thought that enchantment was kind of cool. Shiv's Embrace, Wall of Frost, and Orc Battle Driver. Whenever another creature enters the battle... Oh, it's a two colorless, two mountain, Orc Warrior, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains haste until end of turn. So, kind of reminds me um, of an enchantment that uh, had a similar ability. I think it was called Red of War, something like that. Anyway. Uh, I mean, it's only a four drop for a 3-3 three, three with a pretty good effect. Again, I don't know how much play that's really going to see in the standard. Psalm Offering. It's a fun little card to annoy your opponents with. Difficult Spy. Mark of the Vampire. That was extremely powerful in the pre-release events. So if you're going to the uh, release events and you're doing a release tournament, Pretty good stuff. Battle Sliver. And Indestructibility. Uh, three colorless, one planes, a war enchantment. You enchant a permanent, so any permanent you'd like, and it is indestructible. And, uh, yeah, they actually, uh, I'm sure you've, many of you have heard this already, but they actually changed Indestructibility, and, um, uh, to where now it's no longer just something that's written on a card, but now it's actually one of the uh, 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 one-word abilities, um, which is going to change some gameplay, although, I'll be honest, I'm not a magic judge. <laughs> not quite sure what all it's going to do. But hey, if you know, leave a comment below. I'd love to know. Uh, the other thing they changed, too, was uh, unblockable. Um, so, just thought that was kind of interesting. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more, though, with indestructibility come the next set. Um, Theros, I think it's pronounced. And uh, it's going to deal with the Greek gods and uh, things like that and the mythology of them. So, there's going to be a lot of legendary creatures and a lot of indestructibility. Let's see what my rare is. Nightmare. It's a five colorless, one swamp, nightmare horse with flying, and its power and toughness are equal to the number of swamps you control. Yeah, I already have plenty of those. Alright, let's see here. Come on. Alright. Frost Breath, Plummet, Master of Diversion. Lightning Tylons, Dawn Strike Paladin, Hive Servings, which, by the way, is going to be really good for any of you Sliver players out there. It's a two colorless, one plane sorcery that says put two one one colorless Sliver creature tokens onto the battlefield. So if you already have your effects set up, 
you just play that and your army is, just grows. It's really good. Um, Advocate of the Beast. Sliver Construct. Uh, Squall Thief. Uh, Craig Sickness. Bubbling Cauldron, which is a fun little combo card that they've put into the set. Um, Angelic Accord. Staff of the Mine Magus, which is a new card. Um, it's another one of those life-gaining artifacts, three colorless. Whenever you cast a blue spell or an island into the battlefield into your control, you gain one life. That's kind of cool. Oh, nice. Darksteel Forge. Haven't seen that since um, the original Mirrodin block. Used to love that card. It's a nine colorless artifact that says artifacts you control have indestructible. I can't help but wonder if they reprinted that just because of the indestructible change. I don't know. Um, I'm going to begin to fast forward through these because we've already seen many of these commons. Um, Child of Night, Lay of the Land, uh, Essence Scatta, Pay No Heed, um, Rumbling Both, Lava Axe, Lightning Tylons, War Master, uh, Manas with Sliver, which is really good for Sliver players again, especially ones who are playing EDH or Commander. Um, it's just another, um, it's, uh, just like the other Sliver that produces any color. I forget what that's called, and I think it's um, Rainbow Hide Sliver. Uh, Diabolic Tutor, always fun. And Goblin Diplomats. <laughs> yes, Goblin Diplomats. Be jealous. It's a one colorless, one mountain, goblin, two one. Each creature attacks this turn if able. Or you tap him, it's a tap ability. Each creature attacks this turn if able. Because you know, if you ever need a diplomatized piece, you send in goblins. So, let's see here Angelic Wall, uh, Smelt, Negate. Yes, Negate is still going to be with us. Act of Treason, Wild Guess, um, Shimmering Grotto, that's sticking with us. Brave the Elements, Staff of the Sun Magus, which again, just another one of those healing artifacts. Let's try this again. Maybe this time I'll actually get a mythic. Come on, Mythic. What'd I get? Ho! Oh, nice. Crawlian Hydra. Uh, three colorless, two forest Hydra. Comes in as a zero, 0 but has Trample. And when he enters the battlefield, he comes in with four plus one, plus one counters. And whenever uh, he attacks, you double the number of plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. Yeah. Simic players, anyone? Oh, crap! There it is. Oh my gosh. Wow. Sweet. Foiled Garouk. <laughs> About time. <laughs> A good box for once. Alright. So this is the new Garouk. Uh, I was really excited to see him on the list. Uh, I thought his effect was really good. Uh, it's a four colorless, two forest. And uh, he comes in with four loyalty counters. And he gets plus one. And he says, reveal the top five cards of your library, put all creature cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any graveyard. So you pick up the top five, all the creatures go to your hand, the rest go to the bottom. You can give him minus three, and you may put a green creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Free of charge. So like the, uh, uh, what was it called, the World Spine Rum, and... All those massive creatures, or like even the Hydra, for example. Um, yeah, you get that for free. And then, if you get lucky enough, you can do minus seven, and you get an emblem that says, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So yeah, you can begin to play two creatures for the price of one. So, basically what you could do is when you get the emblem, you can play something really small, like Land War Elves or something, and then you can search for a massive Hydra. Wow. Two Mythics in the same box. Yeah. Take that, Dragon's Maze box opening. Man, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see if we can do that again, huh? So, let's see here. Uh, another Blur Sliver, Shrivel, Glimpse of the Future, Congregate, Ah, a good rare. 
Uh, scavenging news. Um, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a... Okay, let me try that again. One colorless, one forest, ooze, two, two. Tap a forest to exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on him, and you gain one life. He was originally printed only in the commander decks. So it's kind of going to be interesting to see what he does in the format. And then the other card I got was a foiled spell blast. Very nice. So two foils. Uh, tap X and a blue. It's an instant counter target spell with reverted mana cost of X. So, again, another counter spell. Yeah, this set seems to have a lot of those counter spells in it. Um, has um, Essence Scatter, Negate, Spell Blast, Cancel. Um, it's a lot of stall stuff. Uh, shock, Duress, uh, Death Gaze, Cockatrice, uh, another Spore Mound, another Spell Blast, Vial of Poison, and right, again, again, come on, Mythic, Mythic, Mythic. Ah, Mythic. Man, that's getting good luck. I'm gonna do that more often. Uh, it's an enchantment, uh, primordial bounty. Five colorless, one forest enchantment. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, put a 3 3 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life. So, I guess ideally what you do is you play this, then you can play a creature spell, get another token. And when you attack and use things like Giant Growth, which is a non-creature spell that gives your creature plus three plus three, you can give another plus three plus three. So, a lot of, uh, wow, this box is a lot of Garouk stuff. Man. Foil Garouk. What are the odds? All right, let's see here. Uh, Molten Breath, Bubbling Cauldron, Bamble Crush, and uh, Silence. So, one planes instant. Your opponents can't catch spells this turn. It's a fun card. And a foil uh, essence scatter. So, here's the silence, in case you haven't seen it before. And the essence scatter. See, though? I didn't, I didn't uh, have you guys uh, show my rare for me. That's why it was just a rare, not a mythic. We'll try again with this pack. Okay. Uh, Sintel Sliver. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Message of Drake, Haunt of the Weak, Volcanic Geyser, Staff of the Wild Megas, Blessing, and... What'd you get me? Imposing Sovereign. Oh, that's not bad. Into one planes, one colorless, human, two, one. Creatures your opponent's control into the battlefield tapped. It's a human, so... Kind of interfering with your opponent, you know. Yeah, I saw that on uh, Daily uh, Magic the Gathering, they uh, had an article on her saying that she would be, she might be really good for Standard. I don't know how good she's really going to be, but... You guys are more than welcome to post below in the comments and let me know what you think. Alright guys, come on, give me something good. Colossal Whale. Oh well. Uh, five colorless, two blue. 5-5 five, five, Rail, Island Walk, and whenever he attacks, you may exile target creature defending player controls until he leaves the battlefield. So, yeah, he's actually going to be the uh, promo um, today uh, for the release day. So, come into any shop and uh, play casually, and they should give you a promo version of him. So that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see, uh... Disperse again, Act of Treason, that was all fun. Tenacious Dead, Staff of the Flame Magus, Windstorm, and come on, it's big money. Grim Return. Two colorless, one swamp, instant, choose star creature card in a graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So you attack, they block, they kill, they sacrifice their own creature to block you, you can do Grim Return, three dropped to uh, reborn one of the things. That's, that's not bad. It's not bad. Um, or like, if you really want to combo that out, 
with, while uh, Innistrad block is still legal, use, um, use uh, Tragic Slip, kill one of the big stuff, and then use Grim Return. So you spend four to gain control of one of the powerful creatures. So, that's always nice. Alright, Staff of Wild Magus, Doomblade, Barrage of Expendables, and let's see what we got this time. Watcha! Planar Cleansing. Three colorless, three planes, sorcery, destroy all non-land permanents. Pretty cool. Alright, Naturalize, Mind Rot, uh, Glank of a Scout, Opportunity, Illusionary Armor, Howl of the Night Pack, and Hunted Plate Mail. It's, uh, it's an interesting artifact. It's a 4 drop, uh, equipped creature gets plus 4, plus 4, and you can tap to 0, so until end of turn, this card becomes a 4-4 four, four spirit artifact creature that's no longer an equipment. Activate this ability only if you control no creatures, and the equipment cost itself is 4 colorless. Um, there's actually a really cool story um, uh, on Daily Ment the Gathering dealing with that armor, and it was pretty fun to read. So, But I always think it's kind of cool when they make up stories for cards like that and then you end up pulling them. Can't help but think of the story. Steel Form Sliver, Young Pyromancer, which I hear a lot of people already talking about de building decks with this guy. So, um, he's a one colorless, one red, human shaman, two one. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a one one red elemental creature token onto the battlefield. So, um, that could be really combo ish with things like uh, Storm decks and things like that, but uh, I hear that people are coming up with uh, other ideas than just that for it. So, alright, let's see what my other card is. Oh, <laughs> it's an uncommon. They cheated me. What did I get this time? Alright, Oath of the Ancient Wood. Oh, it's a enchantment, two colors, one forest. Whenever or Oath of the Ancient Wood or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Okay, yeah. Now, they said that uh, Theros is going to be dealing a lot with enchantments. Well, that's the theory. Enchantments and maybe artifacts. And, uh, yeah, so... That might end up being good. I don't know. So... But it looks like it's really pointing that way. And there is a lot of... Enchantment 8, too. Uh, the Psalm Offering in this set, Naturalized, um, Family and Crush, I think, and uh, some other stuff, too. So, uh, Flesh uh, Pulpa Giant is one of the uncommons, and Mythic. What I get? Scourge of Volcus. Fun. Two colorless, three mountains. It's a Dragon 4-4, four, four, flying. Whenever him or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player, where X is the number of dragons you control. And you can tap a mountain to give him plus 1, plus 0 until end of time. Fine. That's always fine. Oh, and then I got a foiled fog. Because, why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Fog is fun. I love it when my opponents explode and they think they're going to win, and then uh, so they attack with everything, and they didn't realize I had one little force opened. And yes, I play Fog, but only in the fun decks. Opportunity, Encroaching Race, Warden of Evos Island. Um, that's kind of a fun card. It's a uh, two colorless, one island. Flying 2-2. Two, two. Creature spells of flying you cast costs one colorless less to cast. That's pretty cool. And as for the big card. Guardian of the Ages. 7 drop, golem, 7-7 seven, seven with defender. And when a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, if he has defender, he loses defender and instead gains trample. Yeah. 
that was annoying in the pre-release. I had game. I was I had game and just a few more turns by attacking my opponent with a 1-1 flyer, and he dropped that. And I'm like, well, that's awesome. I'd love to try to finish you off, but I'm afraid of a giant statue falling on top of me and killing me. Wall of Swords, Rod of Ruin, Air Servant, and... Life Band Zombie. It's a one colorless, two swamps, zombie warrior, three one with intimidate. And when he enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals the hand. You choose a green or white creature card from it and exile that card. It's the anti garouk Kind of. Ah, oh, look, and there's a sliver token. I haven't seen one of those yet. That's pretty cool. There's always one token that's printed less than the others, and so I'm guessing that's the lesser printed one, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Alright, Blightcaster, Wall of Swords, Water Servant, and... Do -do -do, Gal Rider Sliver. So, one drop Sliver with 1-1, one, one, and Sliver creatures you control have flying. Oh, and then I got a Foil Island. And then a mountain. And then another sliver token. Great. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh... Shimmer Grotto, alright. Shimmer Grotto, Spell Blast, Barrage of Expendables, and then uh, my rare is Bone Slight Sliver. Three colorless, one planes. Sliver 2-2. Two, two. Sliver creatures you control have double strike. Alright. Do 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 do. Cross and Tusker, Doomblade, Elixir of Immortality. And Liliana. Another Planeswalker. Uh, this Liliana is a two colorless, two swamps. Liliana with three loyalty. She gets plus one. To search your library for a swamp card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Or you can minus 3, so target creature gets plus x plus x or minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of swamps you control. And, or you can do minus 6, where you get an emblem that says swamps you control have tap, add 4 swamps to your mana pool. I remember when they originally printed her in uh, M13, and yeah, she wasn't too great. Um, Looks like a plus one adds the swamp card to your hand. It doesn't even play it. You know, Garuk is willing to play you, you know, uh, you know, 15 15 worm, and when it dies, you get two more. And she says, Look, I'm going to get you a swamp to your hand. Yeah, real powerful there, Liliana. Uh, Steel Form Sliver, Corrupt, Singer Vampire, and Domestication. Uh, it's a two colorless, two islands, a war, enchant creature. You control enchanted creature, but at the beginning of your end step, if enchanted creature's power is four or greater, you sacrifice this card. So, yeah, I mean, Liliana is actually one of my favorite planeswalkers, just because she deals with necromancing. And uh, I usually like her abilities, but not that one. Um, the rest of the planeswalkers, though, are pretty decent, like Jace. And Chandra, hmm, they did okay, but Garouk, Garouk makes the set. Uh, Corrupt, Banisher Priest, Staff of the Mind Magus, and Burning Earth. Three colorless, one mountain enchantment, and whenever a player taps a non-basic land for mana, Burning Earth deals one damage to that player. Wow. And another foil mythic rare. Man. Uh, it's a five colorless artifact, ring of three riches, and when it enters the battlefield, it enters with three wish counters on it. You can tap five more colorless and tap it to remove a wish counter from ring of three riches. Search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So it's a really, really expensive version of Diabolic Tutor that you can do three times. Um, I was actually talking about that with some of my friends. And I told them, you know, I'm not sure why they made that a mythic rare. 
besides its ability just being really good, but you're not going to see it in standard at all. It's too expensive. And they mentioned to me EDH. Whenever something's too expensive, the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is Commander. Uh, Seren Angel, Flames of the Fire Band, Artificer's Hex, and Pyromancer's Gauntlet. Uh, five colorless artifact. If a red instant or sorcery spell you control or a red planeswalker you control would deal damage to a permanent or a player, it deals that much damage plus two. So, you're gonna shock someone instead of dealing two, you're dealing four. You're gonna use Chandra's effect to zap for one, now you're zapping for three. So, Lujan Armor, Fire Shrinker, Water Servant, and Clone. Uh, yeah, that's another thing, too, that they did, uh, the changing the rules of um, Legendary. Um, let me explain this card real quick. It's a three colorless, one island, shapeshifter, zero, zero. You may have this card, you may have clone into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. So, they claim the reason why they changed the Legendary rule. Okay, let me explain this. First of all, the Legendary rule says, originally said that if I controlled a Legendary card, and then you played the same copy of that card, or have the same name as it, um, both of ours die. Well, what people would do then is they'd play things like Clone, and they would just make a copy of your Legendary creature and kill it. Made it a very easy way to get rid of big creatures. Um, and that wasn't the purpose of Clone, they said. So what they did now is um, both players uh, may have or control the same copy of a Legendary creature, and if one player tries to play two copies of that same creature, the new one replaces the old one. And this goes true for, as for uh, Planeswalkers as well. So if your Planeswalker is about to die, and uh, he only has one loyalty counter left, but if you have a new one in your hand with an ability that could win you the game, now you don't have to wait, now you can just play it, replace the old one, and use his ability. Wow. Another Planeswalker. Ajana, Caller of the Pride. One colorless, two planes. Um, Ajani, he comes in with four loyalty, gets plus one, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature, minus three, target creature gains flying and double strike until end of turn, or minus eight, put X, two, two, white cat creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is your life total. Now, I really like that version of Ajani. Um, not as much as some of his other ones, but I still think it's good. The idea that you can just play him and suddenly get something flying and double strike. I mean, if your opponent's down in life, you just play him and then just instant kill with, you know, who knows what. Like if you have a 5-1, uh, now he's dealing 10 damage and can't be blocked, more than likely. So, I don't know. Um, let's see, yeah. Uh, Fast Wood Hydra. It's a... Uh, X and two forest Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters, and when he dies, you may distribute a number of plus one plus one counters equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on Vastwood Hydra among any number of creatures you control. So you play him, and when he dies, he gets to distribute his counters however you'd like. So, all right, I only have six more packs here. I'm going to try to wrap this up. Um, don't forget. Uh, you can always watch the recap video for a summary of everything that I've opened up. It's a good way to get a close-up view of all the cards. Uh, trading post. Uh, it's a four colorless artifact that with four abilities. Uh, the first one is tap a colorless in this card, discard a card, you gain four life. Or you can tap one colorless, tap it, pay one life, get a zero one white goat creature token. Or Tap one colorless, tap it, sacrifice a creature, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Or tap one colorless and tap this card, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So the whole point is you can discard a card to gain four life. Or you can pay one life, get a goat. Or you can sacrifice a creature and then you return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Or you can sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. And the idea is that you could do this infinitely it just takes extremely long time because every turn you have to tap it. Um, and so, it was actually really powerful during the pre-release tournament. But, uh, again, probably not going to see it in standard at all. Okay. Liliana's Reaver. Two colorless, two swamps, zombie, 4-3, death touch. Whatever he deals combat damage to a player, 
That player discards a card, and you get a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. And that's fine. And then, uh, oh, just so you can see it. And then Staff of the Mind Magus is the foil. And then I'm out. Alright, let's see what we get this time. Door of Destinies. Four colorless artifact. As it enters a battlefield, choose a creature type. Whatever you cast a spell, the chosen type, put a charge counter on it. Creatures you control, the chosen type, get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on it. So, Sliver's anyone? Oh, and then Foil Duress. That's always fun. Alright, three packs left. And I've gotten three out of five of the Planeswalkers, so let's see if I can get the rest of them, huh? Uh, Wild Ricochet. It's a two colorless, two mountains instant. That says you may choose new targets for a target instant or sorcery spell, then copy that spell. Um, and then you may choose new targets for the copy. So, if they're about to burn you, not only can you redirect the burn to your opponent, but then also you can copy the burn spell and do it again. So, that's fun. Uh, my rare is Thorn Cast a Sliver. It's a four colorless, one mountain sliver, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever slivers you control, sliver creatures you control have, whenever this creature attacks, it deals one damage to target creature or player. All right, now this is the last pack. I'm gonna have you guys pull this one for me. So, get it set up here. All right, Stone Horde Chanta is one of the uncommons, and the Mist into Dreams. Ah, six colorless, one island enchantment. Each creature your opponents control is an illusion in addition to its other types, and has when this creature becomes a target of spell or ability, sacrifice it. And is that a foil? No, there's not. Oh well. Alright, so, I'm gonna do a recap video of the rares and the foils that I pulled, um, so that way you guys can get a close-up view. Uh, again, please subscribe to us, click the button below, and don't forget, we do have these boxes on sale at, the, at collectorstore.com. Again, it's collectorstore.com. And if you spend $100 or more, use the coupon code free ship. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere else. It's going to be $89.99 a box. So that's a lot cheaper than most stores sell them for. And you can get free shipping. So it's a really good deal. So check it out. Also check us out on Facebook. Make sure to like us so you can stay up to date with products that are coming out. And if you're in the St. Charles, St. Louis, St. Peter's area, um, we do hold events every week. So come on by, check us out, take a look at our collection. Happy to meet you. All right, see ya. Hey guys, it's Steven with the Collector Store doing a recap video of the box, M14. It was a very exciting box. Uh, it was definitely a lot better than those other box breaks you've seen me do. The set is pretty good and it's featuring the return of the slivers, which is always exciting for sliver fans. So uh, don't forget, uh, we will have this box on sale right now for $89.99 a box. Plus, if you get $100 or more, you'll get free shipping. Just use the coupon code free ship. Not going to find a better deal anywhere else. Also, make sure you subscribe to us. Click the button down below. See more of our videos as they come out of more products. Get a sneak preview of what's going to come out. Uh, and uh, also, make sure to check us out on Facebook. Uh, like us on there. See again more updates as our products release. Be the first one to uh, order some of our new products as they come out. Or if you're in the St. Charles, St. Peter's, St. Louis area, uh, we do hold weekly events. So come check us out. Be happy to meet you. So let's start off with some of the basic stuff. Some of the foils that I got. So and I'm doing this just so that way you guys can kind of see uh, zoom up version. If you want to read the card, you just have to pause the video. I'm not going to go over these. I'm going to try to go kind of fast here. Um, these are just the basic foils that I got out of this set. Let's get to the better stuff. Let's get to the rares here. So, 
again, overall, this set seems like a lot of fun. There's a lot of generic cards in here. Um, a lot of cards seem to be made to relate, just flavor-wise, to the Planeswalkers. Which I thought was kind of cool that they did that. Scavenger News is uh, first reprint. So now it's actually legal. And again, um, seems to be a lot to do with enchantments in this set. Um, I think the foreshadowing to Thoros, the next block, uh, which they say is going to do a lot with enchantments. So, you might want to get ready for that. And yeah, like I mentioned too in the video about cloning, um, they got they changed the legendary rule starting in 14. So now you and your opponent can both control the same legendary creature, um, and also you can, uh, and also if you play a legendary creature that you already have on the field, you'll just simply replace it with a new one. Uh, this also is true for planeswalkers. So something to keep in mind when you look at clone. But in this next set, there's going to be so many legendary creatures. I think that's why they really changed it. They claim it was because Clone was doing something they didn't attend. So, and here comes the Mythics. Darksteel Forge. Very excited to see that card again. I think they reprinted just because they needed to rewrite Indestructible. Now that they changed its mechanics. Uh, so, uh, it's a fun card from the original Mirrodin block. Um, Colonia Hydra is a really fun card. Every time it attacks, you get to double its plus one plus one counters. Very nice. And now I'm going to show this one now, uh, just because I showed that card. In the exact same pack, I got a Foil Garuk Call of Beasts. Yes, the exact same one. Yeah, so, be jealous of that. Just think, you could pull one of those too. So, very rare to find a foil mythic and a mythic in the same pack. Very excited to see that happen. And I got it on film. Booyah. Too cool. Liliana's okay. <laughs> got another foil mythic. Ring of Three Rishes. Gonna be pretty cool for EDH. And then I got another Planeswalker. So, hope you guys enjoyed the set as much as I did. Uh, I look forward to seeing the next block and seeing you guys in the next video. Again, subscribe to us. So that way you can stay up to date on all the stuff that's, that comes out. Also, be sure to check out our website, collectorstore.com. Alright guys, good luck out there. See ya.